daughter who was so okay. so sensitive to the okay. to the blue light coming off the screen yes. that she was causing her horrible like insomnia. I know. So okay, we're then. we're getting okay. official here. <laughs> it's seven seven oh four, and we'll call the meeting to order. Um, I see no one from the public here, so we have no public comments. Uh, approval of minutes from last meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I just made one minor typo, literally minutes ago. <laughs> oh, I just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it said distract instead of district under the board. Oh, I did that last time, yeah. and then I copied it over because <laughs> it left corrected. I was like, is it, can I do this again? Oh. Like, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So do I have approval? For the minutes as amended. I move to approve the minutes as amended. Can I second? Vote. Is that a call in favor? Aye. Okay, the minutes are approved. Uh, reports and information. Nancy, okay. take it away. Well, as you can see, we're now open full hours. Yay. So we have changed our hours slightly from what they used to be. We are during Monday through Thursday now 9 to 8 instead of 10 to 9 because we had found kind of an informal study pre-COVID and found that we had just about as many staff members as patrons from eight to nine. <laughs> but we have we set a line at the door in the morning of people wanting to get in for it. So folks are slowly figuring it out. So it's it's funny because the first few days like nobody came at nine and then and then now we're seeing people nine thirty, nine forty five at least that are trying that are figuring out that we're open. So um, 9 to 5 on Friday and Saturday, and then 1 to 5 on Sunday, and those will now be the same hours all year long. They used to change uh, between Labor Day and Memorial Day. Super confusing for everyone, so that was something that was commented on in our first uh, feasibility study, is please keep the hours the same and keep Sunday off here. So Sunday's been quiet the first few Sundays we've been open. Saturday's been nuts. Um, evening's still relatively quiet, but but you know, people, people will kind of get in the groove of what the new hours are pretty soon. Um, Can I ask you a question? Yep. Yeah. Are you moving up any programming then also, like to earlier hours? That is the plan. Yeah. When we are back to more in-person programming for kids, Yeah. the plan is in that uh, it's more conducive to doing story times mm -hmm. in the morning. So yeah. we will probably be able to do like a 9.30 and a 10.30 before we only had one story yeah. time in the morning. And then in the afternoon, kids nap, they'll be on. Or yeah. Our so yeah. So right. yes, we are hoping to move programming up earlier. We have a pretty sizable segment of the population that likes to, you know, including me, who likes to get out early and do things. So they are awake. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> but how have been awake for three hours? So we might as well go out. We usually find we have a bunch of seniors and a bunch of kids that are awake and willing to get out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So that was the impetus for that. And uh, because of those open hours, we're leading toward those open hours. We have kept some temp positions open, non benefited positions open for quite a while when we weren't open all of our hours. Now we've hired three pages, two shelvers, let's see, uh, two library technicians and one in adult services and one in children's. But those are all temp, no benefits. Uh, most of them are anywhere between 10 and 15 hours. That's what they're kind of fill in at the desks. So we need them. So that's, um, we have a few of them in place so far, training, and a few more still to train. Um, we do have one more service point, which is our new teen area, which we would like to staff in the afternoons, evenings, and weekends, because that's when the teens are there. And so far, we don't, we don't have staff to do that. So people have just been running back and forth from the children's room when we see people in there. So, um, are those uh, FTEs in the budget? Or they're, the temp, they're in our temp budget. We have it's not a they aren't positions that we go ahead, that we have to request from city council. Those are temp, so they're, they're considered. You know, some are seasonal, some are just temp fill-ins, no benefits, and uh, has to be under twenty hours. So, if we have a separate temp budget than than our regular uh, staffing budget. Um, for example, we, we always have more temps in the summer with children is when it's not COVID because of summer reading programs, which take, which normally have thousands of kids and take some extra manpower to handle all of them. Um, 
have a lack of security down here. Um, the other security I can issue, issue I can think of at the moment is that our security system um, is somewhat problematic, and part of it is that we've worn the keypad out, and it's so archaic that it's no longer available. So our tech had to go searching on eBay to try and find something that would oh, no. work. It's the same kind of thing we ended up with, with the blinds a couple years ago where all the blinds folks that came out, the company was out of business, they all came out and said, no, you need $10,000 worth of new blinds. And we ordered three remote controls on eBay and Jason spliced them together and voila. So, wow. <laughs> so, so we're getting to that point where we do have some systems in the building that are too old to fix. So hopefully that'll fix because our little away button that we use when we leave the library is stuck like glue. So. So our alarm has gone off at interesting times because the button will stick and then unstick. So, so they're working on it now. Um, masking orders, it's been, uh, today was a really good day. It's been a tough couple weeks with the masking mandate. Um, we've had some folks that have chosen to argue about it kind of before we even open our mouths and oh, you, know, you can't tell me what to do and it's not my mandate, and et cetera. So, um, I think the staff's done a really good job of talking to people about it and letting them know that, that you really do need to have this mask on and that we would like to stay open. So we would not like an outbreak to happen at the library. So please put your mask on and keep it on. Um, it's more a question of walking past people and the minute you walk past, there's a mask <laughs> down, down below. So it's a constant reminder. We have Jake, our security person, and Sherry, who's our evening person, and then um, I make rounds of the building twice in the morning and twice in the afternoon, normally just to go up and remind folks. I guess my funniest interaction was the man that told me, I wish you would just stop reminding me about this. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had your mask on, then I would be good. <laughs> so so it, it's, it is mostly an issue um, in tight spaces like our temp computer lab that we have set up before we're able to move our computer lab where we want it to, to go because it is a relatively small space and we have a couple people who have claimed a medical exemption, which of course we cannot question who are in there and you know, we, we never know whether they have a medical condition or not. Um, and so it's, it's been kind of a little bit of a struggle between the, the mask and the non-mask. I'm is curious, it, what percentage of patrons are doing that? Walk? You know, today it was almost none. Um, every, Downstairs and children's, it's almost none. When I walk, when I do my rounds upstairs, more often than not, it's two or three up there. Sometimes it's as much as many as eight to ten that don't have a mask on. But today, everybody got one. So I, I'm hoping that that's a sign that we're going in the right direction. But I don't know. So, okay. so. has anyone been threatening this stuff? Um, one person. I don't. I don't know if I would say he was threatening, but he was sure angry. You know, yelling at the face and trying to get, trying to go behind the desk. And so, so we, you know, we've had a few, but most of the time we just, you know, you need to finish your business and you kind of need to leave. You won't wear a mask. And you know, to the one down that I said you're gonna have to leave now because you're screaming at staff. So, yeah. so, so um, not as often. It's not as bad as we thought it would be compared to what I've heard from some other libraries. So, but then we have other folks that, that you know want us to be more strict and saying, you know, why don't you have, why don't you have restrictions in the children's department? And you are you asking for vaccine cards for children because the children can't be vaccinated, etc. So it's kind of a mix, a mix of people. Is the city looking at doing a mandate, a vaccine mandate? You know, I don't think so necessarily, but I think everybody's going to wait in a kind of a holding pattern right now, seeing whether or not that um, that regulation that applies to businesses, if, if you have a, over 100, you know, if you're like 100 people, et cetera, then there's a mask, there's a vaccine mandate. Uh, don't know if it applies to municipalities. I don't think that that's been cited, or whether or not it will apply to staff. That would be staff, though not public. That would be staff. And that would be uh, potentially a vaccine mandate or um, required weekly testing, but that's not on our horizon at the moment. So. I don't think there's been any written guidance that's come there. from the Fed. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I've heard some chatter about it, but there's nothing concrete at all. 
I'll be surprised when it comes. If there isn't uh, something like this, that if you take a federal dollar, you'll comply with. And that's that's dollar. what the discussion has been: whether it, it, most cities and counties take federal dollars. So, yeah. if I was the president, that's, yeah. that, that's, that's his big step. Yeah. That's for sure. And that would be, you know, obviously it would force people necessarily to, to have the vaccine if they're really anti-vaccine, but they would have to be probably be tested. So, I have noticed that. Um, Today in the news, there were a bunch of multiple testing sites reopening that had closed. Oh, good. So, I think the Heart of Longmont site is still open, and that's seven days a week. So, and drive through or walk up. But I think I think I just saw something about the fairground site opening up again. Good. So, do anyway, you, do you feel like Jake and Sherry are have the right skill set to help you with that? Yes, I do. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. They have your back. Oh yeah. I mean, they're both really good. Good. They know the patrons and. And we went over, you know, I sent um, kind of mini scripts out to staff and we've been doing a lot of coaching. Nice. Just saying, you know, here's how you approach this. If someone says this, here's what you should say, et cetera. So we try and help folks out. And then, you know, obviously that's for the frontline staff, but if anyone gives them any hassle, then they're supposed to immediately contact Jake, me, or a supervisor. I just don't want to put our frontline staff with that. Yeah. So they've been in a bad position for a year and a half now. So I know, I know it's really a huge ask. So, um, like I said, today was a good day. So we're not closed yet, but it's been a good day. So. I, think um, gonna, I think we're going to hear from health insurers. Yep. Say yeah. There's going to be a differential cost. Unvaccinated, you're going to pay X. I think that's probably true. Delta, do you know? United. United. Yeah, United. United. It was United. Yeah. yeah. $200 yeah. more per month. Don't yeah. have a that's, that's a lot to be in the ICU. Yep. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, we're also facing some other weird COVID things, and we're still waiting for the liner that's supposed to go in the drain system in the keyhole in, in the children's department. That was on back order <laughs> to finish off that space. They have a drain system that they put in there because it didn't use to drain. We used to get the kind of ice dam and yeah. snow buildup, which is a problem. <laughs> so, um, still waiting on that. Um, there's still some work to be done at the back staff entrance and the, the loading dock in the back, but that can't be done yet. We have some you know old rusty chains and things back there that, that are not um, up to code, but that can't be done yet because we don't have the materials that are still in back order. So whether that'll be done in the fall or the spring remains to be seen because there's concrete that has to be um, a part of that, et cetera. And it's, you know, at some point it's not gonna stay hot like this. <laughs> so, and also, um, for libraries, the big deal is the new paper shortage. So yes. we're not talking toilet paper. This is a nationwide and beyond paper shortage. Really? And it's affecting everything from people trying to get their wedding invitations to books, definitely. Um, definitely copy paper, things like that. They've already gone up considerably in price. So we were giving out X amount of free copies to folks who came in and were giving half the amount we were before. Um, Publishing, it's a big deal. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I'm taking this to school. They told us we have no paper until December. Oh, so it's so we've actually, yeah, so we've, wow. actually, we've actually had um, official letters from our book wholesaler and uh, advising us to get our orders in now or we won't get the bestseller uh -huh. stuff. Normally, publishing goes in cycles, and normally there's a pretty big fall cycle leading up to holidays, etc of a lot of us selling authors and now they said that the the amounts that they're bidding in are limited so prices are going up and will that affect digital material do you no. think that'll apply in, in no i mean or if it does it may but it'll be a trickle down thing whatever, yeah. and actually you know some of the that's what some of the um, digital publishers are saying hey you know not affected by paper come by us so um, we had already you know until covid never goes away um we had already shifted a much larger percentage of our purchases over the last year and a half to digital materials um and are, are still juggling what the demand is between print and digital but um definitely more demand for digital than there was before and a lot of folks that didn't used to uh, indulge in ebooks and e-audio became fans during covid and their their liking for those digital materials has increased definitely because a lot of folks have told us anecdotally they just said hey I never was into ebooks or the audiobooks until COVID and now I love them so but 
a lot of folks don't like the print books and we're still ordering print books. It's just our prices are definitely going to go up. Um, as far as the print materials go, though, um, even with this, even though we put a request in the budget for some to kickstart pre processing, we have done some small orders with a vendor so far just to see how that looks, what that means. It's for fiction so far. What that means is that we are not physically putting on each little stamp, sticker, barcode, RFID tag, and mylar or plastic cover. Um, I was very surprised when I first got to this library that all of that was still being done by hand because I hadn't seen it done by hand in a really long time. Because the vendors um, do it very inexpensively. It's actually more expensive for us to pay staff and buy materials to do those things than to have the vendors do it. So that's what we're looking into. And yes, it will free up some staff time once we get into that. Um, no, we don't have staff, and we don't have you know a ton of staff to spare. So um, it's good that it'll free up staff time because we're seeing folks that do that technical services are the only people that work in our computer lab right now. So so we're a little short on. Um, we haven't been back to full hours for a while, and we forgot how busy staff we were. So <laughs> so uh, paper shortage was not was not a good thing for us. So that's for libraries in general. So that was what I had mostly to report on, except for the budget update. So. Any questions on that for the budget? Okay, let's jump into the budget. Okay, well, I don't have a huge update until, unfortunately, since we're early and the okay. city council meeting is until tomorrow. <laughs> so it's basically it's all, the base, all the same budget things that we talked about before. Um, I guess, you know, there are many things that made it through in this in the budget both ongoing and um, one-time expenses that i was very pleased with and the things that i wasn't as pleased with were the three positions that are not going through so um for us at this point i, I know it's tough because the you, you, so city can't just keep adding and adding and adding positions but um, for us it's just difficult to function our fte has not gone up appreciably in a lot of years and when i look at how long, how long um, I can get you the info. I think it's. I don't think it's gone up at all, really, measurably since 2013. And so, really helpful. But when I look at, I have the whole chart. But when I look at the amount of programs that we now do, and the technology that we now handle, and some of the other things that have been added, um, it's just tough to keep up. So, yeah, I have a whole. I have. Um, for the, I put together for the consultant um, charts that are actually, it's actually 11 years of all those stats comparative with us, Loveland, Boulder. Um, we kind of, we're kind of half discounting 2020 because 2020, um, the stats are not very meaningful from 2020. Yeah. But just, look, just looking at the other stats and, and um, another stat that was interesting to me in comparison, in comparing those things rather, um, is that our um, our FTE of professional librarians is extremely low compared to other libraries, and that's because that's where we've made that's where we've made cost savings by hiring folks to be library assistants or library technicians um, in lieu of hiring master's degree librarians because they're more expensive. So we have eleven and a lot of and Boulder has twenty six, I think. So, and Loveland even has 14 or I think 15 uh, professional degree librarians. So, and that's one of those, you know, that's one of those debates. There are many things that, that folks with experience can do that, that don't require an MLS degree, but you also, over time, I think you you kind of degrade your service by not having that level of professionalism. But absolutely. Yeah. How does the city handle inflation? Do you, do you get a <laughs> that's, a, that's a really big question. Um, I mean, do you, you know, I mean, definitely, I mean, definitely the city looks at, um, I think they do a good job of looking at salaries and, and looking at market and how the market changes and keeping up with, with the market value. Um, as far as our other categories, um, we usually, we have to keep asking. We don't get an, an inflationary adjustment. So that's why I have to ask every year or two for an increase in the amount of money that we pay to our consortium. Because we do most of our databases through the consortium and those go up every year by at least four or five percent. So but just logically speaking, you'll end up with less 
Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because everything costs. On, yeah. on anything. Uh -huh. I mean, now we're going to, I mean, paper supplies, all those things have gone up by a lot. Uh, like I said, our databases go up 4 or 5% at least every year. Subscriptions go up, which even subscription went, it's not like magazine subscriptions, they went down temporarily when, you know, the demand for magazines kind of waned. It still has, but now they've gone back up. So, just from a conceptual standpoint, I think you are coming into next year about the same level you finished up this year. Yep. So, in reality, you're taking a hit because you'll end up being able to provide less. It's, it's not too for bad. The same dollar. Exactly. Um, this year, it won't be, it, next year is when it will really hit. Not, I mean, for the 2023 budget, because we were able to use some COVID bargaining with some of our vendors because mm -hmm. they were struggling. So some of our database vendors, et cetera, gave us pretty good discounts during COVID and still are in, in for this next year, but it, I don't think it'll happen after that. Just, you know, they're gonna bargain themselves out of business. So we were able to get percentages off many of the things. Um, like the, the databases are really one of our most expensive things that we purchase. But I don't think that that's gonna continue. Councilman, does the, does the city have projection on inflation yet? Well, we haven't we haven't talked about inflation as a factor, with, other than in the terms of the, the salary package, right, and being at, a one, at market plus one percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, that's a, the question is a little different. Mm -hmm. That's that's a legitimate question, mm -hmm. but I but I'm I'm just curious. Do you do you have the number right now? Of, of total general fund dollars uh, right, dedicated to the library in 2022? Um, 2022, it's right around $4 million. So it has gone up, because, but mostly salary personnel. So, you know, with the conversation we've had around this table mm -hmm. is um, percentage of general fund. Mm -hmm. What percentage of general fund you know, is that, the library? That I need to look up. The general fund continues to increase. In fact, this conversation leads me to several questions. Like in 2013, what was the total general fund, so the city's budget outside of capital yeah. improvement, and what percentage of that was the library? Yeah, what is it in 2022? How many how many city employees were there in 2013? How many will there be in 2022? Because we're adding 35 yep. positions yep. for 33 yep. per, per capita. How much were they per capita? Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's exactly because that's your population is. That's yeah. exactly what our consultant, what Annie is is gathering right now and she's been in touch with Sandra Cifuentes and several other folks in the budget office getting those just exactly what you're talking about for the last 10 years so so I don't have all of it Andy does but um, are you going to talk more about that report so, which report Annie's? yeah yeah it's, it's on these kind of yeah. so can I um, still talk about the budget uh -huh. but I wanted to talk about your um, catalog system in reference to the, the, the thing that you want to use with the Epson fund. Oh, that's not a, that's a sorter. That's, that's, a, sorter. that's a material Excuse handler. Me, uh -huh. How do you think that affected your budget? The, the fact that the city believes it's coming from the Epson fund. How do you think it affected our budget? I don't think yeah. the Bosher fund. The Mosher fund. The, I don't. Right? I don't really think it did. I mean, what I look at though is that it's been requested at least twice before I got here, and it's a big ticket item. It did, the request went nowhere. Um, also, I don't know at this point because I haven't bought one in years. I don't have any idea of what the actual cost is going to be. So we had to go. We had to issue an RFP because it's not just the machine. It's whatever modifications you have to make. You have to have an induction window outside and inside so you're cutting into walls and you're doing things so um we issued an rfp it's still out there for for vendors because we need to have the folks come in do their mandatory meeting walk through do their CAD drawings um figure out how much the entire project would cost before i can even ask for something but I, mean, I don't have it i don't have an, any idea in this building how much it would cost so I couldn't go and say, okay, I think ballparky, this would cost this much, and then I'd hate to lowball it. So, so therefore, you were reluctant to put it in the budget because you Well, have number a one, failure. I didn't think it had a, a snowball chance of passing. And mm -hmm. number two, I have no idea how much to ask for. 
I don't want to go in and, and there was a request a year or two before I got here which was way lower than a sort of would actually cost even then. But I guarantee it's probably more. Oh, it is. Just because of it the is. inflation it is. thing. That but at that point, that would not have covered what we needed to do in, the, in that year's dollars. So maybe the last thing I wanted to do was go in and say, okay, I need $150,000 for the sorter and find out it's two fifty. So that's where it's coming from. And it's been rejected multiple times. It, do you see this as a multi-year project or a single No, year? it doesn't take that long, actually. I mean, they, there, there's a little bit of construction putting in those those induction points, but then the sorter itself takes a few days. They're not that; they're they're big and they're um, they're they're kind of constructed in compartments now, so they're modular. There used to be one giant straight piece of equipment, and it was a little bit more difficult to get bring in and set up another modular and they're very easy to assemble so the I think that the um, modification of the space will take longer than the machine itself so we're going to discuss the motion and the EMC fund later it's mm -hmm. just you know while we're on the budget I have this little thing that, that I can't shake is that the city takes the assumption that the funding for this is going to come from the Mosher and the Emson funds and then cuts your budget. That's that's the thing that is. I don't think our budget is cut. I head. just think it's not. It I'm not sure grown, how. Hasn't it's grown no. yeah. but it hasn't grown. It hasn't grown with the general funds growth. And I guess where my reluctance came from is that some of the things that we asked for that were a very small amount relative to that were questioned pretty heavily. Mm. So if, if I have a $10,000 expense that's really questioned, what is a $300,000 expense? Kind of, what's the reality of it? And the reality is we did it sort of 10 years ago, and then we have this fund sitting there. Well, as a taxpayer, I kind of like the city being yeah. diligent in terms of managing its dollars, but at the same time, they can't be um, Junior, you know, they can't penalize you for for being assertive in terms of managing the library's needs. I mean, you know, I don't think it, that's very. Uh, How much does a new fire truck cost? How much is what? <laughs> How much does a new fire truck I don't know. cost? I bet it's more than one of these machines. I bet it is. Didn't we just buy a whole ton of them? Have you because compared we are any keeping city upgraded safety? with the population. I mean, safety yes. budgets are but I was going to say, have you, have you ever looked at safety budgets compared well, to library budgets? Budget, so. budget, but, you know, that's yeah. changing. So, yeah. But this is where I think the board can help the library where you would be at a disadvantage helping the library. Because you have to function within the city hierarchy and, and you know, you're all part of the team and all that. But we're here to advise on that and whether we think that's fair or not. From, from a civic standpoint. He's saying we can apply pressure, you can. So, I get what it. different? Different pressure. Right? Yeah, so let us know how yeah. we can help this. So. I guess I'm to so the point with this, like it. I said, where we really needed this thing get it done. 10 years ago. We are very low on staff, and this is going to free up a lot of staff time, staff time that we need to do other things. So it really is financially well, sound. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a financial. Well, I've seen it. I mean, I've had it in other libraries, and that's what happens. Right. Yeah. So I mean, we, we have these giant. Yeah, we call it a pick library. list. We have this list of hundreds and hundreds of things to pull for people's holds every day, for example, and we never get it done because it's just so many pages. And uh, similar to my last library, the library before, and after we got a sorter, every day it was done before noon. Because it, it just freed up so much other time. Would, with checking things in. would the people who are doing that be able to do the other things that you need, though? Because that seems like a different skill set. Um, and then, some of the other. okay. Um, I see your point because when we were having you know budget meetings, I was asked if the money that I had asked for for pre-processing, you know, if that freed up some folks who were putting you know my lock covers on books, if they could be my computer lab coordinator. That would be a no. Yeah. <laughs> but in this case, we are really sh uh, slow on pulling those holes, shelving the materials. We've had, we have to keep doing all calls for shelving where everybody from me on down 
shelves is because we're inundated. Yes, that's the same skill set. So it, it would fall between this in within the same job description. Okay. But it almost seems like the city doesn't use a capital budgeting, assuming this is capital, a capital budgeting um, exercise similar to what you see in, in business, private industry. I mean, it doesn't seem like they take all that they have in front of them, they rank it all, they, they look at you know what's going to return the most for, for the dollar, and that's how they evaluate which projects to do doesn't seem like that is that is how it works yeah. there's a fairly sophisticated scoring system problem is a, a sorter compared to a fire truck is not yeah or other public yeah. safety health and safety stuff yeah. right or infrastructure yep. flood mitigation yep. water treatment yep. uh, that those things all score higher that's how because the library got because, to where it is that's right. part right. of the problem, the problem. Right. and that happens in libraries in every community because you're i mean obviously you need flood mitigation you need you know, safety equipment, etc. And this is this is very nice to have to move libraries forward, but it's not going to compete with that. Well, this, for whatever it's worth, uh, this will be. My, I'm going to I'm going to weigh in here. I was okay. waiting for my, you know, when I come up on the agenda, okay. but I would just repeat some of this conversation. So I did submit. We were asked uh, months ago, right, for one-time expenditures. Sure. I asked you. Sure. This was on the list. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I raised the question last Tuesday night. Uh, we, we, we got a cap, just so you know, we got a capital budget three weeks ago at, at 4.43 in the afternoon for the meeting that started at 5. Mm -hmm. $78 million in expense. Mm -hmm. We had 17 minutes to look at it before we got into a meeting. <laughs> wow. uh, uh, so, you know, it's like, what do you do with that? So there were things for me that were priorities to look for. Sure. This was one of them. And I, it's not there. So... Uh, and it just happened to be on the, uh, when we were asked for one-time expenditures in May that we that were our priorities. This was on the list. And so it's like, well, why would be at, why would we be asked? It just show up on the list. I don't care what the scoring system is. So um, I have I did send an email to, to to Harold and Dale and and the crew, Jim and Goldman, and um, the top of my list. Well, I've got things. The other budget considerations was the automated handler, mm -hmm. and I've got some narrative here. I, I estimated the cost of two hundred fifty thousand, but that's what at you had least, given to least. me back in May. But that was off the top of my head. I have no idea. Like I said something well, about that's all I had yeah. was that number. Uh, uh, what I what I have said in this, just so you know, uh, and I've acknowledged that, that that there was an agreement to take out of the motion fund. I said for several reasons, I think using the motion fund for this purchase is not a great idea. When asked for our one-time funding priorities in May, I assumed we were being asked about priorities to be funded with general fund or similar resources, mm -hmm. not the motion fund. Mm -hmm. What I am going to say, mm -hmm. unless, unless I'll back off if you want me to back off. Maybe, maybe I'll say to you, I'll back to the board, I'll back off if you want me to. But my message will be, if you want a proposal that, that uh, around which it will be easy to rally the community to create a library district, mm -hmm. stay this course on the budgeting. Here, here. Under, under fund the yeah, here, here. Yeah. Buy this out of the Mosher Fund. And, you, and if that's what you want, it, it's an easy case to make that the, 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 the city will never fund the library at the level it's supposed to, even when we have the money to do it and when, when, you, when we've been asked for our one time priorities. I added, the, by the way, the shelving and the yeah, providers well, and the other things that you gave me. Those yeah. are on my list. And I honestly, I, my position is going to be don't ask me what my one time priorities are and then ignore me. You do that at your peril, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the message to, to the crew. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not happy about it, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's, a, it's an offense to me to be asked and then to be ignored. Mm -hmm. uh, and, then to, and then to fund it this way. And I realize we're on camera and you know, mm -hmm. the whole world will get a chance to, to watch this. Thank you. Um, we are going to put this on TV. I know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, t I'll stand down if you if you don't want that if you don't want that kind of conversation to unfold tomorrow night. But I'm prepared tomorrow night to to make the point that what we're doing with this budget uh, to the degree that, that that anybody would want to make the case mm -hmm. that if that recommendation comes from the consultant, that ought to be the one that that, that you carry to the that this group carries to the to the council. Um, 
this budgeting cycle is going to help make that case. So he's asking us. Well, uh, you know, I'll just jump in. From my perspective, I always see the Mosher Fund as a rainy day fund. That when the, the city was uh, absent adequate resources to fund the library, that that would be a place that you could go to keep keep things going, buy things when they couldn't afford to buy. That's not the situation I'm hearing this year. I'm right. hearing that there's Surprising. more money than was expected yeah. that the city was looking for opportunities and this one just happened to be ignored no I mean, or it, fell through the cracks or you know i don't want to be negative but you know it just it didn't bubble up but you need to realize that we had to submit our budget documents before we knew that this pot of money was there but even so, you, you probably under asked, right? Not even knowing the money was there. And even so, we're well, not I'm not talking about what the other, the other I'm talking guys, about what I was asked. Yeah. The other guys get a relook. <laughs> Why wouldn't you get a relook? I mean, well, it's, it's, there's going to be a relook tomorrow night. Yeah, so I'm guaranteed. Do you think you should do that? I'm comfortable with that. Are you comfortable with that? It doesn't matter. That's, doesn't, I want to hear so what let's, you say. Let's hear what we think. So. I want to hear what you said. Yes. Okay. I mean, this has been since I've been on this board which has been a few years. This is a continual conversation. Yeah, time is now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a yes? Yeah, it seems like it's been an issue since before you even got here. Sounds like a unanimous, yeah, go for it. You know, I, 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 I tried to be sensitive to the answer. I don't want to put. I'm in the middle. <laughs> she is, she is specifically said she's not taking a position. We're the ones taking this position. So. And we are taking that position. And we are an advisory board. You are we think, we, we yeah. think that that's, <laughs> we think that that's the we best know. advice we can give the city yeah. based on what we have seen happen in terms of funding for the library over a long period of time. Well, I, what I'd said earlier in the conversation is that I, I, it was my understanding, uh, and it may be my misunderstanding, that whatever understanding that Nancy had with with uh, the budgeting process and her colleagues, that this board did not assume that this was going to be funded out of the motion fund. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. In my mind, that, uh, you, you talk about rainy day. I don't even about rainy day. It seems to me that you ought to use the motion fund to, to, to pursue things that are real visionary, right? Right. Yeah. That are kind of way beyond. It's like what would be really special, right? Totally not what's cool. essential. Right to have a, a yeah, functioning but, library. But I, I agree with you well, on one I'm hand, but on the other hand, I'm a realist and I've worked I, I libraries it. for a long time. We don't even have a program budget. I we spent, yeah. I spent a, a lot of decades yeah. on your side of this conversation. Yeah, you did. I don't, cool. I'm not yeah. on that side of your uh, yeah. conversation yeah. today. Yeah. So I get, I, get to, I get to pursue it a little differently. Yeah. But, but but again, but I don't want to put you in. A, you know, I don't want to misrepresent this group. That was part of my concern when I said to Harold, "What? Um, the, the sorter out of the motion fund? That's." And then he said, "Well, you know, we all agreed to it." I'm like, I know how those agreements. I don't think anybody agreed. To, no, yeah. that was never. No, yeah. no. I didn't think you all had agreed. To it. No. <laughs> so, all right. So um, you had mentioned that it might be advantageous if some of us come tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're still of that belief? Absolutely. And how long do you think this debate is going to go on tomorrow? It's, it's most, of, most of the meeting is budget. Yeah, it's all budget. So it's not, no, but I mean, there are other topics. I don't know that there's, I don't think there are. I mean, do they do this? library first? They do library oh, I, have, yeah. I have no yeah. idea. No, yeah. right. what the, what the, I'd have to go back. There's. There is a sequence. I have to go back and look at our materials to, you know, to, to tell you where in the, in the conversation. Well, it doesn't matter to me. Because here's I, what I, I, here's, I, I have no social life. I can, I can spend it. <laughs> well, here's, here's the, we have we have family. What do you do now? Family. <laughs> can you attend virtually still? No. No. Here's how I think it's going to unfold, Mark. Um, uh, when we got the capital approval budget, and there's really no, we, you know, we there was no chance to really ask questions. Uh, that night, uh, that was my recollection. We were told ne the next meeting we would have a chance to raise questions. So the next meeting, there wasn't the opportunity. And I made and I made the point. You know, <laughs> we got this thing with no time to review it. We were told then we get to ask questions tonight. Now we don't get. To. What I said was, if we get 
to the point where somebody says to me, it's too late. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be really, really grumpy. That is, I'm just not gonna accept that as a response. We get far enough into this budget process because that's what happens. Well, gee, we should have fixed this back then. But we never, there was, no. so I'm on record as saying, that is not gonna work. That's just not gonna wash this time around. So we were told then last week that tonight, tomorrow night we can ask questions. And we were told, if you to give us your questions in writing, I don't know who else did that. I did, but you know, they've got a number of them for me. Uh, uh, and I and I expect us to get our my I want my questions answered before we get into any other budget presentations. Otherwise, the, the same damn thing's going to happen. You're going to get too late. Right. You know, people are going to be exhausted, or let's right. pick this up another time. Right. I mean, that's just the right. way it goes. Right. Right. Um, so I've got I know what I want to know tomorrow night, and I want I want answers to my questions before I have another budget discussion. So if we show up, what does that, how does that work? You want to well, I would suggest that something? during public invite to be heard, you use your three minutes to say, either all of you or some of you, or certainly you as the board chair, um, to say, we understand um, that tonight begins discussions or presentations and discussions about those parts of the budget that would include the library, whether it comes up tonight or not, or not, not before. Because my questions will come up. Um, and, and we want you to know that that we are uh, we, we we all know that our, our, our library has been under resourced based on the, the, the work of a uh, consultant hired by the city to do a, to conduct a feasibility study. Uh, we know as a, as a percentage, if it was a million dollars a year just to get to average and we're at four million, we're under resourced by twenty five percent. You know, as a general right, as a general number, or twenty percent at least. Um, and so it'll be we're going to be keen to observe and to look to learn as an advisory board how much of that 20% deficit we will make up in this budgeting cycle and beyond because I don't think we're making up any of it I think we're getting farther away. is this where we start talking about library district and city council well, yeah. yeah. Well, my, well, I, I will make this sure. sounds Not like that. Right. Oh, only because oh, like that is uh, we'll get to that with feasibility study part two. I mean, that is part of what the consultant has been hired to do is to say a district is an option, a hybrid is an option, to study how these options could best fund the library. And it's going to happen when? That's going to be finished. In the next few months. I mean, so that doesn't work for us. So here's why. Because Boulder is about to put this, they are going, yeah, they are. They're going whole hog. Yeah. And they are right up there wrapping around Longmont if you look at the map. Mm -hmm. is they're taking every And they've been planning this for five years. So yeah. if we don't move now, um, we are going to lose a huge potential revenue stream for the city's library to Boulder. Their number is four times, five times, actually, what your number is. They want 20 million. 20 yeah. million. And that's what their their district's going to create. And they're going to suck a whole bunch of that at Longmont. So, we need to act now. We can't wait two or three months for this report. We can't. We have to start talking about it. We have to start now because we have to be on the ballot next year. So, but wouldn't that give the city less incentive to give us money in this budget cycle if they're like, well, they're just going to become a library or trying to become a library district anyway? Well, that would be okay. A year of pain yeah. is okay if we double our because budget our next hand. year. Yeah. So, and yeah. get a new building and all the things that go with the library. But isn't it? I mean, we want to we want to do what is best, and in my opinion, I'm waiting for the feasibility study. Of course, that seems like a very um, logical answer. Can I say uh -huh. one thing about the feasibility study? Mm -hmm. That thing was supposed to be done before yeah. the, the pandemic. Yeah. It, it was, but it's not. Yeah. And so, therefore, if we, I mean, if it just went on the ballot and it was voted down, that's it. Oh no, you can do it again. That's what next slide was. It got voted down the first time. Yeah. Well, the point the, the, the point that, that I'll make tomorrow night, unless unless you'd rather me not, uh, is not to short circuit the feasibility study. Would be to make the point that if the expectation is, or if there's a, an expectation that we won't proceed, or there isn't a, an appetite for proceeding on the city staff, this budgeting cycle is going is is a big or this decision is a big mistake. Um, if you don't want to see that kind of a proposal come forward, then what people who care about the library are going to want to see that we are making up the deficit 
And this is not how you make up the deficit. This sends it the exact opposite message. It sends a clear message that we move forward fast on this other stuff. But well, well, I'm I'm just saying that 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 they need to hear that. I've I've said it. They need to hear it tomorrow night publicly. I don't mind talking about um, the library history, but my concern is that it'll get in the way of this budget. The people start fixating on that, and she won't get the money. So maybe well, it's a timing issue. Maybe also, the folks that are already upset and talking about a library district before even the breeze will say something. Now, if we want to do something a couple weeks later, fine. But uh, uh, my personal right, fair don't, that makes don't, don't want to have a get start muddy in the water of the public. I, I, the, the, but to his point, I think it's not, not going to come up. I think it will right. you'll get he's there gratuitously. He's right. planting the seed, right? Right. Like, what, what, it, one it, decision it, is going to influence the other. Um, whoever in the community thinks, however the people in the community think about this, they think about it. But some, you know, are going to sure. be automatically points of other decision. What I think it's important for decision makers in the city of the time this is not a decision made in isolation. There is a there is a keen interest on the part of people who care about the library to see deficits made up, or it's a clear message that there's only one way to do that. It won't be through the traditional budgeting process. There's not the will or the the appetite to do that. The only alternative then is uh, it, it, uh, is, is to create a, a, a district. But but I'd like to do the best job I could to make the case in this budgeting cycle. To do more, right? The the specter of the of the potential library district, it, which should be a reason to pay attention. But part of the case for me is just simply you ask me for my recommendations and then you ignore them. Don't ask. Don't. I mean that's that sets up a different kind of communication with the city staff that that I just assume we not get into. I I, I would rather not happen that way. Um, but they need to hear that message as well. But I've, I've also seen this work um, another way. One of the cities where I worked, um, looking at a district, did the city did kick in this much more money, and then everyone said, "Well, we started doing the rest of the, you know, getting people together and enthusiastic about dedicated funding." Said, "Well, you just got a bunch of money, and what we got was like a hundred thousand bucks uh, or two hundred thousand bucks when we needed two million. Yeah. Right. So." That is a little bit of a concern for me too. Yeah. Is, is them kicking in and saying, "Look, look, we gave you three hundred thousand right. dollars, and now you're done when we're short by now." Right. You're just grateful. So, yeah. well, yeah. that's that's exactly it. That well, the, exactly the, the, the vision is a library of the twenty first century, probably the twenty second century. But that doesn't really get it done. That, no, of course that, not. That's that doesn't put you on the road. I know that, and you know that, but when I'm you just, ask the public, I'm they just, say, oh, you, you just got a bunch of money last year. What more do you want? Right. So I'm just saying that that happens. Well, this is, it, you can kill anything with an incremental improvement. We yeah. used to do it yeah. all the time in corporations, right? Yeah. You want to kill a project? Let's exactly. give a little bit more. Let's give them a, let's give them a yeah. tiny bit, and then yeah. people say, look what you got. So, yeah, it's a, that's not what we need here. No, we, need, yeah. we need to double our budget. To yeah. Give the city but my point is, that's service. not happening. That's not going to happen this year. It's so, not going to happen. Not going to say. Yeah. But it could with the district it next could. year. So, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to use this as a, like a bludgeon or anything with your budget. I just want to do what's right for the library and for the city, the city and the library services that it deserves. Because we're not the city we were in 2013. No, we're not remotely close to that city. Because that's when I moved back. And here. libraries aren't so that they are either. Yeah. No, yeah. So, I mean, so it's, it's, I think his approach is the right approach. I think that we need to do that, but I also think that we need to, a couple weeks from now, and I can, we'll get to this, but we are moving forward with stuff from the library and I met, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay, great. Well, I think it's good, I th do think it's good that this particular money is tied to one thing. Yes. That you've asked for 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 And so yeah. it's not like yeah. we're giving you $300,000 to do with what you want. Like for yeah. one item yeah. that yeah. you've asked for, for years. Over time. <laughs> it's an easier argument to yeah. say than 
or but we don't we need more money period right you you know. they still said no to three of the positions right. yes right. So. And, and two of them are part-time non benefit and they're like this much right sure. so yeah. it was, it was yeah. i mean the, the amount of paper like sorter would fund those positions for six eight years so well that's to those numbers the staffing numbers are going to be really not for tomorrow night but um before we finish this budgeting cycle to know uh the percentage of library employees, mm -hmm. what percentage you represented in 2013, mm -hmm. what percentage you represent in 2022, mm -hmm. compared to the overall yeah. uh, number yeah. of employees, yeah. right? Yeah. In, in, in what you represent yeah. in 2022, my guess is it's gonna yeah. be much smaller. Right? That, I mean. Well, and, and it's not it's not even, it is, but it's not even the size, it's the diversity. It's the, you know, that one of the positions we ask for is a bilingual outreach coordinator. That wasn't a thing in 2013. Right. We need a computer lab coordinator because our needs have only grown in that area for something more sophisticated than just dropping. But if we can't get the numbers, you'll never get that diversity. No. I mean. No, you won't. Uh, so, so one way to make the case is to say, if we had just kept up. Yeah. The number of people employed and assigned to the library. Yes. What 2013, that yep. you would have this, this would be more this FTE, yeah. diversify it in ways that make sense in 2022. Yeah. 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 Well, I will, I will commit to come tomorrow night for whatever it's worth, and maybe I can touch base with you on some numbers before I go. To so, I mean, do you want help drafting a statement, or are you feeling extemporaneous <laughs> by the spirit kind of thing? Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's a passionate guy who talks a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take whatever help I can get, but I, I think I need to make sure that the numbers are in. I'll get numbers for you. Okay. And it, if you guys have time and want to come along, I mean, but. I have a Wednesday meeting as well, so yeah. I've got to skip tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I can't, but I'm glad that you will be there and you have. All right, well. I am likely to be there. I have another meeting, but this is. If my kids were vaccinated and I could bring them. <laughs> <laughs> this was January. The, the message is you're on your own, boss. <laughs> if I could zoom in, I would. I've been on my own before. Okay, well, all right. So, um, anything more on the budget before we move on? Okay, how about the uh, Friends of the Library report? We have that right. meeting is on Wednesday. They're meeting Wednesday. <laughs> That's your meeting. Because now, okay. now we're meeting before they are. Okay, so we'll skip that one. Uh, we were going to have a sign-up sheet, though. We oh, were going yes. to have a sign-up we sheet. Have a sign sheet, and we do not. Okay. Um, but we will next. We're yeah. we're covered through the end of this. We'll cover through the end of this year. Yeah, yeah. this year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for those that are attending, as long as you know, that's fine. But yeah. we'll work on some for next Yes, I can see. Next year. Okay. Um, <laughs> then I think we've covered everything up the whole business. And um, everybody's dying to hear what's going on with the peace yeah. study. We have a meeting on Friday with Annie. She's been crunching lots of numbers. I've been helping her assemble a ton Last of Friday. data. It's a, no, the meeting will be this Friday. This Friday. So I don't have a ton of info for you. She has finalized um, questions for stakeholder interviews. We've given her a whole list of stakeholders. So she'll be doing a lot of 20 to 30 minute um, calls or online meetings with stakeholders just to update and uh, we I think that the initial call consultants missed a few folks and also some things have happened since then um, some of the questions talk about some of the same things that the first consultant did the role of the community of the library strengths and challenges of the library the facilities definitely you know changes in the next 10 to 20 years so that's the next step with her she's like I said she's been compiling data the stakeholder interviews come next, and then it's going to be the larger group that meets, which includes some of you folks on the board and some and friends and other. So is that a September uh, stakeholder interview? She is. Inter she she will start well, interviewing as soon as we have our meeting Friday. She will be interviewing folks next week. So we could be asked to interview mm -hmm. that week. Okay. You I have may, I have both of you on her list. Good. So. You, you may want to give her a heads up that as we crank up this issue about the budget, uh -huh. pressure may come back on her. People are asking, well, where are we at with the feasibility yeah. study? 
So I mean, it, it may come all the way around. There's no and may I, about that. There was a lot of pressure on that. So, I mean, we it. Also, it also took months for them to get a contract. Like so. like I know yeah. you were. Yeah. As you know, our job is You're not. <laughs> we balanced that out. It's between us. She expected it to start months earlier, but she did not have a contract. She did uh, not have uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, anyway, that's where we are. So, on the board for Friday. Well, maybe um, you can send out an interim update. I can send an update. You can't, just I mean, remember, don't reply all, but you can send right. comments to be, right. just you know. Give us a heads up yep. on where we think you're at. <clears throat> Any questions on the feasibility study? I have a lot of questions. Are you hunted by it? <laughs> <laughs> It's like rock hard place makes the end of it all. Yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. Yes. Uh, Mosher Empson Fund policy. Uh, I put it together. I got one comment. Hopefully, that was not of you to just change it from quarterly to semi annually. So, you had asked for more frequent. I oh. changed it to quarterly. Mark said too frequent. Came back with semi annually. Well, I think if you're doing the whole update on it, semi annually is fine, but I don't think that precludes the library from making a request at a different time. This is just the this is just the semi annual review. Yeah, my, my take on it was I thought it should be more on the savings account than a check. They, they should be bigger items to, to the councilman's point. They should be visionary and um, it should be special. Not something that's required to operate a library. Yeah, right. I mean, it wouldn't. It shouldn't, shouldn't interfere with the friend, shouldn't interfere with the city. I don't know. What, what, what have you done with the policy that talks about its purpose? So, it's, mm, I don't really put a whole bunch of purpose. Oh, I said the review will be the library strategic plan and then the request list in relation to that strategic plan. Which expired two years before I got here. Not just forever, so. Yeah. <laughs> there was no strategic plan. So the reason I asked the question. But there wasn't any, I did not put any, I didn't, I didn't want to put a stipulation on the library per se because I don't know what they want. Uh, but I guess we could good, good Well, let's, let's hear well, It would seem to me that you'd, you'd want in that policy statement, uh, or in the policy a statement about what the intended uses or purpose of the motion fund in the Emerson fund would be. Unfortunately, in the funds themselves, the descriptions say designated for library purposes. And so, and so, let's, you, then, then you ought to be clear what those purposes would be, it seems to me. Because if we had that policy, and, and, we, and there was a real clear statement that this is not just to, to supplement what's it necessary. Does say, I did write conditionally, fund request should not should represent items that the library would not be able to get via Friends of the Library support nor its annual budget. Should I be more strident in that? Do you, <laughs> want, do you want to write that? Do you think things like... Um, that's, a, that's a pretty good statement. That's a generic statement that fits up what we want. So then we get to decide, right? right. So in your comments, John, it wouldn't be a bad idea to say we have been working on a policy statement uh, specifically to, to guide what, how we think and what we do with the motion fund. This is this is what we believe should be the purpose of the motion fund, mm -hmm. which is which is which is well, what I, you're I, doing. I really wasn't going to hit the motion fund tomorrow. I was just going to. They put it in there. Well, the motion fund is it's. Identified as the funding source for this sort. Okay. I did tell them that. I mean, I told them that we didn't have the specifications for how we would spend the fund, and that you know the only thing that I knew at that point was that here is the fund. Here's how much is in here. That the library wanted appropriate funds, we had to make a library request of the board, and then the board had to request. You know, I might account. I might make the comment tomorrow night or some other night. This had fallen off the books. It didn't yeah. show in the well, that's in, what in, in the right. yeah. city's finances, right? Yeah. Uh, until until we raised the question, what about that fund? Mm -hmm. Which fund would that be? Mm -hmm. So, which <laughs> to, and then okay. so for I have to say I, this is my um, I tell Harold to do this without consulting with this group. Whatever conversation you had with you is one thing. 
but to, to not just gone around in circles. I don't want to. I, I don't want to end up in. Uh, I mean, I like my job. Thank you. Um, this is about. It's, this it's is the, about. Are you going to request this? You know, these little requests aren't going through. We didn't know anything about having more money available. We turned in our budget. Budget, which means at that point to request a three hundred thousand dollar item when ten thousand dollar items is a question is not something I thought would ever. Fall. Sure. Now, so my that, so this is point, not to you. My so, message to the city manager. So at that point, though, I mean, Harold talked to me about it. He said you had this motion fund. Have you considered it? And I said yes, I would consider it. But we have not made a, the library has not made a request of the board at this point. Right now, we have an RFP out to see how much this project costs. We don't know. So that's where we're at. My message to Harold is it's really bad politics on the part of the city manager to assume that the city can spend the motion fund without any consultation with the group that you've convened and asked for advice. And no matter what I've said, they're going to turn around and say, I asked them for, I asked them to take out of the motion fund. They didn't ask me. Yeah. Should have asked me. Yeah. As a liaison. Yeah. Because I offered. This is not about you. Yeah. Not in your, in, because there, because there would be more, there would be different. It was not well received that I gave you a request for that. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna did stuff that wish list down somebody's throat. <laughs> did you ask her? Did you ask her for a wish list? Yes, and I gave it. To and her. that, that, did you tell them that? Yes. Okay. Yes. And it was not, not well received. I told them that. She didn't offer that up. I, I pushed her for it. And I told them that. And it was not well received from your bosses. I would ask you to name names, except we're on camera. Nancy. 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 I want to let you know that yeah. the double doors on the inside of the house uh -huh. use the, the tent side that we're looking at. Okay. That's the one that opens the other one that's not. Okay. Do this. Okay. Okay. Um, one question I have is getting away from the larger discussion. We're saying just for you, Sean, food. Should we say it in name? I'm sorry. Right. Uh, just said, when we were talking about the what the review of the board will include in the third paragraph, we say this board shall include strategic, you know, total amount, strategic plan, and all that. Should we change that to May? May include, yeah. It's probably better wording. Just give us a little more room. Yeah. You could take what Katie read and in, 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 in seamlessly connect that with and. Uh, What's uh, visionary or you know, or uh, necessary operations, right? To cover those kinds of aspirational. You know, the language she had is fine, but but to connect it with with what we used to do. Well, I, I think we're close, but I, what I'd like to do is recommend sending it out again, Katie, based on this conversation for a second reading, yeah, and then uh, put it up for a vote. Yeah, we never it's a live document. It's good. But I, it's a live this. document. Like we're we're editing right now, so you can get in there. I can send it back around too. Yeah, yeah, link it one just, one. Yeah. just you know, we've we've heard some different thoughts. Maybe we want to interject them, maybe not. You know, let's let's um, take another shot at it and then I mean never this is this isn't something that's burning to get done, but it's something that we felt was prudent and should be done. So I think now, based on everything I'm hearing, it's, it has greater emphasis than when we first started out. So send it around for second reading. If we have anything, we'll throw it in there and we can put it up for a vote next meeting. Is that for some reason? Thanks, Katie, for doing that. I just want to sort her. I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, this she knows that this is going to cause her. This, been, this has been something that we've needed for a long time. We have a huge circulation of the small staff. This is the exact kind of equipment we need. And the last thing I want is to say, forget it. We're not even going to entertain looking at the Mosher Fund. We're going to ask for the budget. It's going to get refused. And then Lord knows how long it's going to be. Then, then, we'll, the then, we'll, then the board will we'll react to that. Yeah. And then we have to go through. This is not a, this RFP process is not a short one. We got to go through the thing multiple times. Well, you, you don't even know what to ask for from what I'm hearing. We have to. You have to use an RFP so that you get your cost of proposals. So people come in and tell you how much the thing costs. They give you a proposal. Normally, if you were doing this, you would then bring the proposal back to the board and say, "This is how much it costs." Would you entertain going to city council and asking for this much to be? Taken from the voucher fund in order to purchase purchase this. If they said yes, and you go to council meeting, then you buy a sorter. Well, 
I could see putting a plug number in the budget since you don't know the total number, like two hundred fifty thousand or whatever. I don't and, even know what that is. Well, what if it's, what if it's uh, well, hear me change? out. Hear me out. So I could see putting a plug number in the budget, and then if it's three hundred twenty thousand or whatever, the, so the board the, the board then would pick up the rest above the plug number. But it, you know, we would obviously like the plug number to be. <laughs> and I have seen this council go back and add funding to things multiple times, so it's not a hurdle. Maybe they could take a whistle off the car truck. <laughs> Can I say one thing back just to the language around like visionary projects? I love that idea, but I also, if we don't become a library district, I don't want to tie Nancy's hands. That's my point. And I have to have so. her not be able to get what she needs because it's not visionary to have a sorter. That's why I like the wording you got there, which is fairly really generic. Right. Yeah. So, but I do think in spirit we should try to move no, that way, direction. Just, yeah. my, whole, my only point was to be clear the, the, the expectation is the Mosher Fund and the IMS Fund are not used for or what would be operational. Day -day operation. And, and it's not to, to supplant the kind of funding that you should expect for operations. And I would, I would add, yeah. That. But I would add in, I mean, I, I have felt the same way since I got here about the Friends, about yeah. how libraries have program budgets. Yeah. And, you know, they are, and they, the Friends said, what us, our, our computer management system to manage our computers. They have funded all of our programs. They have bought software, all kinds of things that have supplanted what should have been in the library budget. So this is not a new thing. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. But if we had not asked the friends for some of those it's, things, it's one of the reasons we're doing a feasibility study. Yes. Right. 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 Part two. I guess the other thing I'm just saying though is that do we want to lock ourselves into particular understandings of this fund before we know what's going to happen with the feasibility study and where your eventual funding streams are going to come from? Like we're saying, let's wrap this piece up, but is that wise to do before we know what the long term? process is going to be for funding library. Well, I mean, as long as we keep it reasonably generic, we're not wrapping it up to okay. lock it down. Yeah. Um, you know, his, his, he's not wrong, but at the same time, this is a, this is a fund we recently found. Yeah, right? it's just found yeah. money. It's like money that was kind of buried somewhere. It was buried. And nobody is controlling that money right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody's saying what should be done with it. And so the only way that's Library happen, purposes, that's it. Then this is the library purposes group. So we should step up and we should say, we're going to help figure out how this money gets spent. And if she says, I really need this sorter now, and there is no other way to get it in the short term, mm -hmm. I don't see a problem with it. But this is something the city should pay for. This is not something we should take out of a special fund. Well, I, I agree with that. My intent of the policy was to create some responsibility around the management of the money. Yes. Yeah, the money was fine. just sitting there. Yeah. I mean, it, it had, a, it had well, a, a, a likelihood to, of yeah. being squandered. There was no responsibility set up for the board. I think it was incumbent yeah. upon us to mm -hmm. to try and put some framework yeah. around that so that whether this board or some future board at least has some guidelines as to how to manage yeah. the money. Yeah. You were, and that's all I was looking for. Well, yeah, because it's, it's more bylaws than it is more, we can change it, but now, now it's in our bylaws. So mm -hmm. it's even, you know, so The absence of this is what got us into this discussion. Right? Yeah. Right. Had that policy, had your policy been adopted and people were aware of it, they, they, there, there might have been less of an inclination to assume that we would use the motion fund to fund something that's you know, essential right. for this library. Right. Right. I agree. If that right. policy were already adopted. And it can change. If you get a library district, that's what, that's what you do. Your policies are right. that's cast in right. carbon yeah. stone. But, but all, all the concerns that we're trying to address in this policy kind of bubbled up through this budget because you know the, the, the interest in trying to use it as a piggy bank to, to supplement the general fund was not the intent as the board saw it. Actually it supplants the general fund. <laughs> okay so are we okay on that one? Mm -hmm. Just send it around we'll again. Send it board. around. Um, Moving on, uh, nothing on a little free libraries because there's we have no two friends. possibilities that well, I'll be running those tests in front of that Okay, and they are mm -hmm. one of them is actually we have they're very different. One is um, a little free library at the Hope Shelter, the overnight shelter, 
they seem quite interested. And the other one is an opposite type thing. It's at a, I forgot the name of it. It's a brand new coffee shop in town that's looking for a bookshelf, a bookshelf for patrons. So. The one on Main, yep. like seven. Yep. Uh, oh, they seem like they're they seem like they're really interested in doing some community outreach, and they would put a shelf in the front of the library, etc. So, so, so those are two possibilities so far. Your read is they're inclined to get more involved with little through libraries at this point. Okay, great, great. Uh, I'm going to move on then. Uh, Boulder Library District update. I didn't see much new. I'm reading, I'm reading everything that's out there. Hi. So, Prudence from a friend of the library okay. I met, we are going to have a meeting on the 27th of this month, uh, which will be the first um, beginnings of a citizen committee to look into this. She's going to bring a couple people, I'm going to bring a couple people, um, and we are probably going to, uh, Boulder's work, so we're probably going to copy some of what Boulder did okay. in terms of reaching out to the community, saying, you guys anybody interested in joining this committee things like that so my question to you guys is anybody here interested in, in being involved in that and you you've looked out through the Boulder, Boulder committee has a good website oh yeah we, we've we've that deep that. into it Prudence yeah. a riot by the way you were right she's her. awesome yeah. <laughs> she is awesome so yeah. yeah we're gonna have a lot this is gonna be not only an important project it's gonna be a fun project mm -hmm. yeah. So did you set up a primary uh, I believe we did. I, I, I can just say, but I'm guessing I'm not available at how much we don't be able to meet. Well, why don't I? Unless it's Zoom. That will, it might very well be. Sometimes if it's a rate, planning period or something. I, the rate we're going right now, we're headed back towards Zoom. You know, a lot of things, I think. Right. I will, why don't, can I get with you to maybe coordinate with some of these guys? So, sure can. so basically, I will get to her the exact time and place. Uh -huh. And then um, you, she'll send it out to you guys. And anybody here who's interested should welcome you to join. So I do want to limit it to a certain number of people. I don't know how many yet, but it, you know, it can't be 50 people. It's got to be somewhere between 10 and 15, probably. In there. You, so. if you need, yeah, get in touch with me if you need. If you want to meet in person, you need the conference room. Let yep. me know. Okay. But otherwise, we can and we have again. the LPM space yeah, as well, so true. we have lots of places. Which there. may be better because you can probably do more drink there than necessarily. Oh, I was told that, that Biff Warren is the unofficial mayor of Nywant. Biff Warren, he would be the guy that we should contact. Biff, yeah, yeah. I know. I thought he was dead because there's a baseball <laughs> player like, named after him already. But apparently, he is uh, the puppeteer. So, anyway, my friend knows him and has his contact info. I don't know how we would approach him necessarily, but if we want a Nywant. Oh yeah, there's a Biff, there's a Biff Warren athletic complex. That's what I'm right? talking about. We spent a long time there, okay. my family. And he's not. So he's 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 not I know. <laughs> you gotta be big time because we already have a memorial complex <laughs> and you're alive. <laughs> it says Bruce W. Biff Warren. I want. He's an attorney. Well, yeah, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to. I'd like to participate. Uh, if you'd like me to participate, oh, yeah. and you were involved in the first round. So. Yeah, I didn't get a complex angel. But I get my right? quad flight I think money. in the early <laughs> afternoon. Yes, small town. Small town big fish. Yeah. Either the morning or the evening. Okay. Morning is funny. Personally, for me. All right. So, well, my guess is it'll be the evening. So, but we'll see. But that would be great. The name is another thing. I think we picked it's a Thursday? No, no. I, I got the 27th as a Monday. It's a Monday? Okay. So. I mean, it would be our normal meeting. Yeah, it's this coming Monday, yeah. yeah. But this was this is like next week. So yeah, right. next Monday. Yeah, yeah. So I will get um, all of the info to her. Look here, I've got. I think we talked about it, but we'll see what we set up. Well, you set it up how you need to set it up, but for me, I would prefer either the morning or the evening. Would you we like, have not set a time up yet, so. Would you all like me to send, I can send you the list that, that Annie has of stakeholders that she's going to interview. Yeah. You can, you can reply directly to me, remember, and I'll reply all, yeah. et cetera. But if there are some holes that you see that you would like her to interview as well, or you may get some ideas off the list, too. Yes, that's yeah. Okay, that. I'll send that That'd out. Be great. So is this really a combination of the library uh, district update and your board activities and one conclusion that these buildings have? Um, 
depends on the feasibility study. <laughs> The feasibility, I, I can tell you that, you know, from what, I, from what I can well, say, I don't think there'll the, be anything the feasibility study is going to it. say that the library needs an independent yeah. source of funding because yeah. the library is going to be low on all of those level of service parameters that we talked about before on space per capita, on, on collection per capita, on programming, on technology, on FTE, right. on all those things. Right. And so, so it's going to be at least a hybrid and a minimum. I would I would be shocked if that were not the case because Fair. I just don't think that I mean I think y'all think I can ask for a three hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment which I'm skeptical about but I don't think I can say can you throw in another couple million dollars on top <laughs> of that so I, I don't think that it will counteract you moving in any direction. I I just believe that right now the the fact that Boulder is doing this yeah you know, for real for sure. Is going to negate much of the negative that we've seen, especially when Walmart. folks know that they're including NIWA and some other. They're well, they're meetings. including everything right up to our board, yeah. right up to the city board, yeah. all along it. But I don't think people it. will be as shocked about like Gun Barrel, but I think NIWA things that are in yeah. the St. Mary Valley School District. Yeah. I think that that will be impactful yes. because yeah. usually library districts go along school district borders more often than not. Yeah. So. We might even get the school district to be on our side on this one, <laughs> so we have possible. So that's so that's I think now is the time. To, I don't think we should wait and wait wait for the study to be done. If the city wants that, I'm just. I don't going. know how fast it'll be done, so I think you should do what you need to do. Yeah, we need to get it started. We yeah. need to get it on the ballot next year if Boulder's doing it, and we need to make it clear that this needs to be fair. It needs if if my wife is using long bonds, and. You know, but using both about equally when we look at it. Yeah, before. then maybe we should so, be looking at something that's more specific. And real and realize that Niwa wants a branch. Right. Whatever. Because the they're thing. not gonna they haven't been paying for library service, they're getting it free. So yep. they're not gonna say, Oh, allow me to pay money and not want something in return. Oh yeah. And but just, on the other hand, that side of Longmont leading toward Niwa would, would be so, a great spot yeah. for a branch because anyway, they're, yeah. they're pretty far away. So yeah, they're, they're, yeah. So, so yeah. I totally agree. So that's that's kind of the thinking here. Is mm -hmm. let's just keep moving. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not going to stop. There is a reason I asked to be on the library board. <laughs> this is one of those reasons to see if we can make this happen. A lot of that surprises me. Gee, <laughs> what a shock! Are there local close by hyper districts? Um, the closest thing to a hybrid that I know of anywhere nearby would be Cooter River yeah, in Fort Collins, yeah. but I think they're less hybrid-y than they started out. And I yeah, they're moving the other way. Because they, when, they, when they first separated from the city and became a district, they contracted back for a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. For HR, for facilities maintenance, for a lot of stuff. I don't think they contract back for nearly as many things as they did. I think, I think they've had a good relationship with the city of Fort Collins. I think it's been relatively smooth, mm -hmm. but I don't think they're as dependent on that relationship as they were. Right. Um, that's just what I've heard though, and I, I can talk to David Slipkin, who's the director there, and see. Um, it would be, we'll, we will definitely do that once this gets going. Just see what He's just about to retire, so Ooh. it would be good to get him quick life. Well, he might be more available than him. <laughs> so. What's his name? David. I can give you his contact stuff. Slivkin, S L I V K E N. But I can get that to you. Yeah. Okay. But he would really be a good one to talk to you about that. We've also been talking to, so I'm, I've been doing these city council um, interviews with all of the city council people, and one of the people I've been working with is a fellow named Richard Lyons from Lyons Gaddis <laughs> Law Firm. Um, turns out he's an expert in library districts. He did the Lions Library District. He no way. Huh. did Erie's. He did, he's done a bunch of stuff. Huh. He's retired, and I did try to suck him into this, but it <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't succeed this time. I think I have to get his wife involved somehow. But, so, just, but you still know Kim. I do know Kim, Kim but at the same time, he has other people in his firm. But, so we have a so local. We, we have a local. Local firm would be better. In yeah. Longwood, that knows knows a lot about library districts and districts. That's, and districts that's, districts that's, districts that's, districts, so. that's a really good thing. So just so you know. We're already starting out these conversations. Okay, so to recap this, um, Friends of the Library meeting maybe next 
Monday. It, it will be next Monday. I just have to get a time to time, time to We're going to talk about talking about the formation of a citizen committee and a formation of a library foundation mm -hmm. that will work alongside the Friends of the Library. She's interested in talking about that as, as am I. So. And, and, do, and don't discount talking to Eric Pazumba through that because, oh, yeah. because yeah. my last foundation in Bellingham was one through the city's foundation and we got about six million dollars in bequests in the short time I was there. So we have and we have two choices here, the Boulder County one you and the Walmart one. And they're yeah. both they're both you have right. they're both so, very good. Yeah. So just just a possibility. If you don't want to do all of the stuff yourself, like they gave us a great deal. And well, no, we won't run the foundation. That's yeah. what community foundations do. So we want that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, bigger libraries have their own foundations, but then they have to hire a foundation director and all that yeah. stuff. And that's. No, we want a place for people to put their excess money yeah. that they would like to yeah. give to their library. So well, have it be offered to them as an option. Yeah. Because that's people to think we about. We want to it. make sure Scott's request has a place to go. Yes. <laughs> That's right. How many sorters can I buy with a nun? Find a place we'll to put his name. <laughs> no, I would not buy a sorter for you. Sort of it would have to be something much more interesting. So. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a compliment. Yeah. Right, well, I, I know all of this is a compliment, but yeah. I prefer no names. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're good on the, the library district and good on the board. Yes. Uh, so. Follow up so far on the book. Uh, okay, uh, Nancy, tell us what you know about the I don't know as much as I can, but I have a meeting tomorrow. They couldn't give it to me before then with the city clerk because I gave them what I had and they at first said, no, no, ours are right. And then supposedly once they dug into it, they found a reason for the discrepancies and so we are meeting tomorrow in person so no. i will get back to you asap and, because <laughs> i told i said that there's no reason that that one should be five years and one should be three years right. and right. i understand right. about finishing terms and so that's the first time they could give me an appointment because i don't know that says five years i know you do i told them i told them specifically that you did so and it was free so i have to meet with that tomorrow maybe i should hold them to that five years what do you think <laughs> <laughs> what <did I> say? <laughs> Also, that, that leads into letter F because they're the same ones that change the meeting date things. They change it in some spots, and they're still it's, they're still wrong on the main uh, library page. So, so I will that will also be that, addressed. That, that's also meeting. coming tomorrow because I'm going to be in their office. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, comments from the board. Um, I, I hope that we can, for those of us who aren't able to be involved with this effort, I mean, I don't have time, but um, cool. that we can, you can keep us up to Oh, yeah. yeah. How do we do that time. in a way that we're keeping with sunshine laws? How do we do that? You know, I have to, I have to figure that out because it's going to have to, I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to do it as an official. Yeah, you can't put them on the mail list, so. You can't. I mean, you can, put them on, you, know I mean, you can put them on a mail list right now. trouble with Slack list. Yeah. So you can put it in a second. You can put it on that. Yeah. You can't do that. But we so, could have a public website. You could have a public website, absolutely. We did that in, in um, oh, where was I? Yeah, Bakersfield, where we had a website for the kind of vote yes. And I guess give the city credit here. They're engaged. Long my website's not a bad thing. And no, we it's could not. use that. We use that to gather questions for the mayoral and city council no, debates it's a good site. we're putting on. And we got some interesting responses. And that's so, often that's often where you want to get the basic advice from yes. a local attorney that's in and they, they really laid it out for us in Park County and said, here is what you can, you know, here are the basics of what you can do and here's what you absolutely can't do. And that was useful. Yeah, we need that. So. Yeah. Okay. So if this is a board-driven activity. It, it really can't, can't, it really can't, can't be a board-driven activity. Okay. The board can support it, but depending on which state you're into, this is why we need to call okay. the Colorado sure. person. We don't, the board can yeah. support it using X percent of their time. We also don't Same have, with friends. well, I don't know if that's yeah, true. It, it, it may not be true here. It may not be true here. There's, but, well, we have no fiduciary responsibility, so yeah. we aren't actually, you aren't governing. we're not really a board. That's we're true. an advisory council committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can, honestly, we can do anything we want, really. 
we can pretty much. I mean, you, we have to obey the sunshine laws. We have to do all yep. of those things. Yeah. But there's nothing limiting what yeah. any one of us or the group of us can do. And then, you know, once, once, things get, once things get further, um, as far as library staff go, you know, we can educate but not advocate. Yes. And there are right. certain things like library staff would be, it'd be perfectly fine for us to hand out your flyers that say, you know, you could even go as far as to say, if this was our budget, if we were to have this amount of money, here are some of the things we would do with it. Well, you can't is, say it for sure. There is a model already in, in place here. Absolutely. It's called Next Life. Yeah. Longmont did this yep. already. And LP, you know, Longmont yep. Power Communication yep. did all of these things. Yeah. And they worked closely with my group, which was called Friends of Fiber. Fiber yep. is good for you. <laughs> Fiber is good for you. And that's, they didn't like that. They didn't like that one. That's 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 right. association. <laughs> but we really helped push push that through yeah. that group, yeah. and they worked closely with us to help distribute our stuff. And so it's there's a model already that the city has done before. Yeah. So so you, on our meeting minutes or an addendum to our meeting minutes, we couldn't create something that says like local activities involving the Longmont Library. And for those, I mean, you can you can post anything there, but you could post this sort of thing there, and that would be like a common. You probably could. Thing that you could get the information on, and you wouldn't necessarily fall into uh, sticky issues with the city. Would you do something like that? I don't know. I would think so, but I'm not an attorney. <laughs> Well, the first so you I, just you just have to be careful because there are people who are going to be the vote no people no matter what yeah. who are going to be looking for whatever mistakes you made and libraries across the country have been well, sued lots of times. We wouldn't we wouldn't necessarily endorse it. We would just be communicating activities involving. I think you could say that this library, the, this ad, this library local. library advocacy group is meeting at this time. Yeah, it's not going to be related to this board. Mm -hmm. It's going to be something that we do outside. Yep. This board will be involved. There's yep. some people on it will be involved, involved. But I'm involved in many things. Mm -hmm. This is one of many things I do. So, and that's true of all of you. So, there shouldn't be any conflict. It should not be an issue. So, yes. <laughs> the answer is absolutely. This is information. Yeah. You're allowed to do that. Anything else? Councilman, anything for us? See you tomorrow. Uh, with that, uh, eight thirty-one, we'll return. Scott, were you next meeting? Next meeting is October eighteenth. They are. Uh, Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. They're going up. Yes. 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 Yes.